This week on Machinery Pete TV, some great one owner equipment goes up for sale on this Ohio auction, including this monster Case IH Quad Track 400. This McCormick Orchard transforms from junk to gem, and the importance of keeping that primary tractor up and running. Your machinery is a serious investment, and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery Pete TV, coming at you from Northwest Ohio this week. Now, we were in this almost exact same area a year and a half ago, Monroeville. That was in the summer. We watched some really nice John Deere equipment sell. You might remember that John Deere 7810 sold high. Now, today we're here for the retirement auction for Jack and Renee Cox. Some beautiful red equipment. I think we're going to see some pretty hot bidding. Thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. The U.S. and China have signed a phase one trade agreement. Negotiations on phase two begin now, according to President Trump. After 18 months of a trade war with China, there's now a truce. President Trump and Chinese Vice Premier Liu He signing the agreement at the White House Wednesday. The big announcement coming out of this for ag? China has agreed to purchase and import, on average, at least $40 billion worth of U.S. food, ag, and seafood products annually for a total of at least $80 billion over the next two years. Chinese businesses will purchase $40 billion U.S. Dollars of agricultural products from the United States annually. If the demand is strong, the companies may buy more. They say, sir, our farmers can't produce that much. I said, I love our farmers. Let them tell me they can't do it. And I said, tell them to go out and buy a larger tractor, buy a little more land, but they'll be able to do it. I have no doubt they'll be able to do it. President Trump says tariffs with China will remain in place until both sides have a phase two agreement. He says those negotiations will start immediately. Markets taking most of Wednesday to digest the agreement. Analysts say it may take several weeks for products to begin flowing. It's a big deal for U.S. agriculture. It means that China is back in our marketplace. They're now uh, regular buyers once again. We don't know exactly how the Chinese will make their, their programs work, but we assume that they may have duty-free licensing, which means that the Chinese will keep their tariffs in place, but give the opportunity for, the far for their importers to look at which commodities they will be buying under a zero-duty import program. That's it for news. Now let's look at some recent auction prices from around the country. Now back to Machinery Peak. Hey folks, the snowflakes are falling. Don't go anywhere. Coming up, you're gonna wanna watch this 2001 John Deere 8410T, 2691 hours on it. No other cornhead works like a Drago or pays you back like one. Visit your Drago dealer and see how you can justify owning a Drago on ROI alone. Hey folks, I'm here with my friend Rira Cox with Schrader Real Estate and Auction. Well, let's talk about the sale today, Ritter. A uh, beautiful line of equipment for, for Jack Cox, uh, low hour stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jack was uh, everything here today, one owner equipment. Jack bought everything new, but I yeah. think maybe an older rotary hoe or such. Right. and. Uh, Jack drove steel truck, was able to put uh, quite a few acres together and farm and yep. enjoyed farming. So 
Got an excellent line of Case IH equipment, some John Deere planters. Should be an exciting day, but excellent line of equipment. Right. How about the uh, the two track tractors on the sale today, given the wet conditions uh, last couple falls? Have you been getting a lot of interest on those babies? Yeah, absolutely. I think track tractors this year showed the flotation could uh, you know help you get the crop in the field. And, of course, uh, his tractors with low hours, the case especially, uh, just a little under a 1,000 is going to be very popular. And, of course, track tractors are coming along. Of course, you got right. the new John Deere that just come out that's total track tractor. Right. So, uh, right. Uh, it's, they're going to move forward in track design. And as, and as uh, expensive as the new ones are, to find used ones like this with low hours, pretty attractive option. Yeah, it's pretty incredible and definitely the market's uh, looking for good used tractors with the new price that has kind of escalated. Uh, definitely the used equipment with low hours is uh, in great demand right now and well cared for equipment that's been stored is right. going to continue and always has brought good money right. and is going to. All right, folks, time for another great track tractor. We got a 2001 John Deere 8410T, 2,691 hours on it. Now, the last 30 of these things I've seen sold at auction. I've only seen five sold for 45,000 or more, and I've seen three creep just over 50,000 bucks. Four, now five, 65, 65, now six, 66, now seven, 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 now all right folks it's tillage time next we're going to watch this really nice 2014 case h 875 seven shank ripper cell now this thing's got low acres on it last four 875 seven shanks i've seen sold at auction Average price thirty eight Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale.
Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com. From Minnesota to Texas, the patterns of harvest are never the same. When Harvey came, I hadn't had, I didn't have anything harvested last year. We lost everything. From horrific harvest events to a changing pace of planting, this one tractor is Aldridge's lifeline on the farm. That's my main machine. Running it around the clock. Summer, Spring, fall. summer, fall, year round. It's the main machine that also created an eventful hiccup, one he nor his local equipment dealer will ever forget. Finally, I see that this unit's going in a D-rate, trying to turn itself off to save the transmission from any catastrophic damage. That alert popping up on Norris's phone in the middle of the night. Finally did get an answer. Customers wondering why I'm calling. Inform him something's going on with this tractor, and he tells me that nobody's supposed to be running it. And he said, well, uh, you might want to go look at your tractor because uh, it's showing it's moved. So, And you hadn't set foot in that tractor? Not since the day before. So he was not only able to tell you what was wrong, but also where your tractor was? Yep. He, he, was t he asked me if, uh, if I knew where it was because he knew it moved, and uh, he told me actually where he thought it was. Farming solo, he says that access now provides him not only peace of mind, but comfort. You know, it's kind of like having a mechanic riding along with you. Exactly what happened to the tractor that day of 2017 remains a mystery. Somebody in the middle of the night must have got into it. I don't know if they were having problems operating it or what, but they left it in gear, turned the key off, and got out. A mystery that may never be solved, but it's technology helping him navigate the challenges of farming along the way. Welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, we're off to West Central Iowa to learn about a classic orchard tractor. Owner Will Sick traveled from Iowa to New Mexico to pick up this International 06. He said it was in pretty rough shape when his son-in-law Steve found it, so he got right to work on it. Today, it looks brand new. It was produced mostly for orchard work, and the, the unique part is that it has very has an excess of tin work to keep protect the operator. And most of the work in the orchard was pulling a sprayer, in a, usually in a trailer, and they might have had a hand boom on it, spray the trees. And then this area between the trees for weed control. It has the extra tin work to keep you from getting slapped in the face repeatedly by tree branches. It has the same engine as an M Farmall, and I've never been around one, but that's about it. My son-in-law was a, in a job site in New Mexico and saw this tractor along with an OS6, let me know they were there, and a year later they were still there. So we called and got them purchased and went down with and a trailer and went down and got them. When we got these tractors, <laughs> they were pretty rough shape. Did not have the side shields. We brought them here to my place and then I decided to keep the OS6 and he took the O6 home to Minnesota and rebuilt it there. And I helped him some there, but he did most of it. Oh, we found some red dirt in the air cleaner, which the only place I could think of it comes from is Oklahoma, and, and my son-in-law mentioned it, Steve mentioned it, it might come from Southern California. We'll probably just continue to show both of them, just get them out on Sunday and drive them around now and then. I have Harold with this one on mine a little bit, but it's not the, not the easiest tractor to drive. It doesn't have any steering assist. <laughs> Let the proven performance of Prosaro fungicide maximize your grain quality, yield, and profit this season. Hey 
folks, I'm here with owner Jack Cox. And Jack, tell us about your 400 here. Boy, this is a sweet rig. I ordered it new uh, back in 13. I actually, I ordered it a year before I got it. Okay. It came in and it didn't have the row spacers for it. Okay. So it sent over to Sherwood for about another six months okay. before I got it. And it's been a good tractor ever since. Just over a thousand hours Just on it? Just over a thousand hours. The tracks are new. I had trouble with the, the small tracks, which Case IH has had trouble with. You had eight, there was 18 inch 18 tracks? 18 inch tracks okay. and they one starting to separate. So I got them to trade me for the 24s and I've been happy with them. Now the new tracks, the 24 inch tracks, I mean, that's a lot of money just in the tracks, wow. Yeah, that, yeah it's an expensive option, but it, you know, they ended up, they treated me right. They, they traded me even up for 18s and 24s, I was happy. And with the new ones costing what they do, to find one with a few years on it like this with low hours, boy, it's a pretty good option, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. 195. Boy, it's some pretty competitive bidding there, folks, on our feature item, the 2013 Case H. 400 road track, 1,054 hours on it. Just a beautiful rig. Sells for $194,000. I tell you, that's not far off retail. Our friends at Titan Machinery in North Dakota, I saw this morning, had a one listed for sale, a 13 model, 1,274 hours, asking 2033. Rob asked, hey at Machine Repeat, need some advice. Just bought a rural place, pondering acquiring a skid steer or a compact tractor. Which is the better bang for the buck? Well, I threw it out to our Twitter audience, got some great replies. Matt from Minnesota said, skid steer hands down. It's the greatest machine, so many attachments. Kelly concurred, saying skid steer, so much better for snow removal and using around the yard. Bryce Hansen came down on the side of tractor, saying I have a 35 horse that does everything at my place. Mow, snow removal, grading, tilling, planting grass, digs holes, remove trees and brush. Jordan raised a good point and said skid steer for sure unless you are planning on driving miles across any open fields. Way more versatile and tougher overall. I even chipped in and said be sure whatever you purchase has the ability to power the attachments you plan to use. Craig's point was, Rob, depends on how much work you have to do. Budget is also a consideration. Skids are more money up front, but typically hold their value. Troy chimed in and said, tractor, especially if by yourself. Hop on and off, way easier. Can see behind you better also. Samuel Turner said, it depends on what you needed to do. A compact tractor can do everything a skid steer can, slower and more carefully, but a skid steer can't do half what the tractor can. Joe Breidenbach, sales director with True North Equipment, in the Red River Valley said, do you plan to mow a finish lawn? Tough with a heavy skid steer. Make a list of what you want to do and post it. Neither are the best at each job. The Ryan Anderson said, I'm not at Machine Repeat, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> Good one, Ryan. That said, if you don't need to travel long distances in a hurry, I'd go with a skid steer every day. Well, Rob, I love Joe's advice. Make a list of the jobs you need to do and then consider each option which will work best. And for my side of things, uh, take good care of it whichever way you go. There's very strong demand for good use compact tractors and use skid steers. Boy, I tell you, some pretty hot bidding on the track tractors today, folks. Consistent with what we've been seeing the last six to nine months. The John Deere 8410 here at 68,000 bucks. That's the highest auction price I've seen on that model in 11 years. 
Now, thanks for joining us here this week on Machinery Pete TV. We'll see you back here next week. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Thank you.